Greetings from Tokyo. I'm Trip, and welcome to the Hammer of Wrath. This week, you and I face the Leviathan. Let's go. Thanks for joining me in the studio. Today, we begin our journey through Leviathan. The box finally arrived, 10th edition is here, and I went straight for the Screamer Killer. But first, I'm going to take 10 seconds to talk about the Shinkansen, or the bullet train as it's colloquially known. Famous the world over, the Shinkansen is one of the quickest ways to travel between cities in Japan. And recently I took a trip to Kyoto. Now, normally by car, this is about six and a half or seven hours away. But if you take the Shinkansen, that trip is made in two hours and 15 minutes because the train goes 200 miles an hour. It's lightning fast, inexpensive, and a great way to get away for the weekend to another city and explore more of Japan. Well, let's talk about Leviathan and the Screamer Killer. Like thousands of other people, I stacked up Saturday morning in the internet queue to pre-order Leviathan, only there were a few wrinkles on my end. Because I am in Japan and I have to access the Japanese version of the GW website, my sales went live a little earlier than the rest of the world and I queued up about a half an hour early. But the minute I was able to load into the page, I was greeted with this. Instantly sold out online. I was absolutely heartbroken. Out of frustration, I went back to the main page, clicked again on the thumbnail to Leviathan, and was greeted with the same listing. Hoping that it was just a glitch, I went back out to the home page again, but this time I noticed that there was a pre-order button right on the thumbnail. I clicked that instead of clicking through to the main listing and it added it to my cart. The only problem was I couldn't tell if I had ordered the Japanese version or the English version. Now, my Japanese isn't great. I can do things like order dinner, buy a refrigerator, or pay my bills, but things like learning a new and complicated rule set to a tabletop game, that's a bit beyond me. So there was no way for me to know that I had ordered the English version until it arrived two weeks later. And I went to the shop that Saturday only to discover that, like thousands of others, my pre-order hadn't arrived. To make things even more frustrating, the limited stock that the store had had simply sold out. Instead of holding those copies for those that had reserved them, they just sold them to people that stopped into the shop. So those that took the time and expense to pre-order were left empty-handed, and those that showed up on the day of were able to walk away with sets. Frustrating to say the least. But two days later on Monday, my copy did arrive at the local shop, they contacted me, and I dashed out to get it. And I went straight for the Screamer Killer. It's an incredibly iconic unit, and the glow-up that it received for 10th edition is amazing. So, let me show you how I painted the Screamer Killer. Like most Games Workshop starter sets, the models here were push fit and they went together easily, but did need a little cleanup and I had to fix a few of the seam lines using sprue goo to fill in some gaps and then sand the parts smooth. Once I had accomplished that, I then attached the arms. Looking back, if I had to paint the model again, I would have left the arms off. It complicates things when you want to reach some of the parts in the rib cage and other areas that the arms sort of get in the way of. I primed everything white knowing that my Tyranids have a lighter color scheme through most of their bodies. And then I did an undershade using Steel Legion Drab. This is going to give us a really strong shadow tone. I simply worked my way around the model, hitting anything that would need an undershadow. And when that was done, I used Xandru Dust to create my mid-tone. Here I'm spraying with the airbrush at about a 45 degree angle. And then finally, some Ushabti Bone just along the tops to create an additional highlight. With all my airbrush layers complete, I then moved on to the washing stage. Here I created a wash using Agrax Earthshade and Lamian Medium in a 1 to 1. And then I just worked my way around the model, applying it generously. Here, just go section by section and you'll be fine. Once the wash is completely dry, I then dry brush the model in order to bring out the highlights and details. One of the hallmarks of my high fleet unending maw are these spots, and I put them wherever a limb meets the body. So I worked my way around the model using a dark purple. With that detail complete, I then added a very subtle gradient of Druki Violet through the airbrush on the end of all the limbs. With the body complete, it was time to move on to the carapace, and here I'm using Corvus Black and a large brush to cover the areas of the carapace quickly with a smooth, even single coat of black paint. I'm simply working my way around the model, 
being careful along the edges where the carapace meets the body so as not to undo any of the work that I've done previously. There are large areas here to cover, but fortunately this paint is actually pretty decent and covers in a single coat. With the base coat of black down, it was time to put on the cone of shame to make sure we didn't get any purple overspray on what we had already finished. So here I'm using the airbrush and a dark purple to give a very subtle gradient to the edge of all the armor plates along the back, and of course along the dorsal protrusions. With the airbrush purple laid in, it was time to do the edges of our carapace, and here I'm using a zero brush and that dark purple, and I'm simply working my way around each of the panels, creating these scratches using that, and when that stage is done, it's time to do it all over again, only this time we're mixing a little white in with our purple to create an additional edge highlight that really makes the panels pop. This can be time consuming, but there's nothing to do but to do it, put on some music, focus, and get it done. Another hallmark of my Hive Fleet unending maw are these intricate detailed patterns that appear on the back of the carapace of all the monstrous creatures. Each one is different, and I just sort of make them up as I go, but every one is done in the same way. First, I lay down a light layer of that purple mixed with the white to create an outline of my shape, and then I fill it in using that dark purple. With that out of the way, it's time to finish off the few details remaining on the model. We're going to use a burnt umber and all the sort of sinews and vents along the model. And a third signature of Unending Maw is a strong punch of fluorescent green somewhere on the model. In this case, because the Screamer Killer spews plasma, I've made his plasma vents and his mouth that bright green. Once I've got that settled in, I just paint the teeth. I lay down a base color of cold gray as my foundation, and once that's dry, I'm going to shade them using Nuln Oil, but the trick is to first lay down a layer of Lamian Media. This creates a flow state that allows us to push around the Nuln Oil much easier. If you've got too much on there, not a problem. Dry your brush and use it to pull away the excess shade. We're going to bring our highlights back out with a very quick dry brush of Corax White. And when that's set, using the airbrush, we're going to glaze contrast basiliconum gray along the tips to darken them, almost like a bull's horns. The final thing to do here was to finish our base. I've super glued down some cork rocks and applied a ton of the technical paint, Astral Granite Debris. And once that was dry, we finished with a quick dry brush of Corax White. And there you have it, one Screamer Killer complete for our Tyranid Hive Fleet Unending Maw. This is the first Tyranid model that I have painted in almost 10 years. To say the Games Workshop had neglected the Tyranid line for a very long time would be a bit of an understatement. But I'm happy to have brand new Tyranids to paint. Look forward to more videos on the channel in the weeks to come as my Hive Fleet grows. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was my genuine pleasure to make and share it with you. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. Drive us to the front of YouTube. We've crossed a major milestone and we've hit 2,500 subscribers. I cannot believe how the channel has grown. Thank you for all your support. You can always check out the t-shirt shop, bakingsodatees.com where we sell one-of-a-kind unique designs not available anywhere else. And of course, you can always join our Patreon linked in the description below. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one.